And welcome back to On TV. So happy to this uh, morning to have Lee Mason, who's the union president of ETFO for Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma. Good to see you, Lee. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me, Erlan. No problem at all. Now, president of the English Teachers Federation. Elementary Teachers Elementary. Federation of Ontario, yes. So with regards to the sex ed curriculum, that's such a huge issue. And it's, it's difficult in my mind to understand that it's still um, unbalanced and school started. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those issues that uh, it came apart as of, obviously as of the election. Um, it was one of the campaign promises by the Conservative and, and uh, Premier Ford when he was elected follow, started following through with this and gave vague uh, kind of hints at the end of June about what was happening and over the summer break um, obviously put things in place that, that repealed it and uh, uh, surprising enough in the last couple of weeks I implemented something which we're calling uh, for the, the snitch line the, from yes. the parents and stuff. Um, so yeah, it really he, he has created a lot of turmoil for our beginning of our school year um, just not knowing specifically, there's no details about a lot of the issues that he's he's put in place there. So I think that's part of the, the confusion. And and also, you know what, it's it's like how <coughs> how can you possibly understand a situation when a lot so many people in the situation don't feel like you're informed enough? And and I think that's what the what, what the uh, ETFO is is part of our injunction, part of putting that there. Uh, in place uh, yesterday, our, our pre provincial president Sam Hammond uh, addressed the, the uh, province and told the that we are part of the group that's putting that that injunction forward, and it really is about keeping the information that we need to have in to the right people right now. The 2015 curriculum, which was the one that was repealed, um, and really went back to the 1998 curriculum, is what's out there. So they're, they're doing a reissue of a 2010, but it's the 1998 curriculum. Um, and the information that we're trying to get there is, is we need to have the modern, our, our students now need to have the modern information. We need to support the students as where they are and the needs of today. And that's really the crux of the information. Uh, our our um, injunction is based on we don't feel that the repeal of the, of the curriculum meets the uh, Human Rights Code, the Canadian Charter of Human Rights, the Education Act, where we're, we're, all, we're obligated to provide the, the curriculum and the information that's necessary for our students to, to survived in today in 2018, not in 1998. And so. it was also mentioned too yesterday how <coughs> the teachers are, according to the injunction, being undermined because of the snitch line. Uh, that, that's actually, it's, it's a big concern of ours. Sure. That, uh, it, and especially considering it's an uh, anonymous snitch line, so it opens its way for kind of vexatious uh, complaints. Uh, that's good, and it, it, it could be a way of, you know, potentially outing students, parents, um, teachers uh, who are, happen to be, you know, um, uh, their personal private lives are, you know, they might be gay, lesbian, bisexual, straight, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it, could, it, it opens the way for bullying and, and for some of those concerns. And it really undermines and erodes what we actually have in place. We have a great system in place now through, you know, parents can call, can talk to teachers directly, they can talk to the principals, they can call the board. There's a, there's a mechanism already in place that's been working. Um, to address some of those issues. So if, if a parent didn't like something in the curriculum in math or language or something happened at school, they could call the principal, they can call the board, there were those things in place. And there was that open and accountability. There was the face-to-face -face discussions, there was that who, was, who it was coming from. And then also the decisions and the information that was there also went back to that person. So they got to understand of where mm -hmm. it was. The anonymous snitch line, there's no way that we can guarantee that those people who are making the complaints are getting the information, the right information, at the time they need because we don't know where it's coming from. And you know what, it kind of reminds me <coughs> of, of Facebook posts and Twitter uh, posts. Um, people sort of get very brave, right, when right. they're anonymous. So they, they become cruel, they become um, uh, critical, um, not always fully informed. And, and, I, and ironically, that's part of the stuff that's, that's out of the curriculum now. Um, because back when it was written many, many years ago, uh, there wasn't the social media. There wasn't students in, uh, I was an elementary teacher, so before I took the position and I was a junior classroom. Um, when this curriculum came out, my, my students didn't have cell phones. They didn't have Facebook. Right. They didn't have those kind of com social media issues and the dangers that are associated with them, as you just spoke about. Those issues are what we need to address now and, and part of the reasons why we need to put in that we need to make sure that those issues are staying in the curriculum so that the students are getting educated on the needs now, so there's safety and inclusion. And that, taking that out, it, it, it's a safety of our students' concern. So talk about the, the, the confusion, I think. Both my daughters are teachers. And like, what, is, what do they have in hand as of today with regards to sex ed? 
Well, as of to, there, there is a, the government has kind of pushed something out over the summer. It's a, two, it's a they're calling it a radio issue of the 2010 curriculum, um, which really is, is kind of a, a, um, a covering of the 1998 curriculum. It's, it's a reissued um, in kind of a more modern format, but the information, um, really what the difference is, is right now, I can tell you that ETFO is actually is looking at that now. It's only been recently come out mm -hmm. onto the website. It's only recently been in the hands of, of the boards and the and the uh, and, and right? the, the, the ministry and the and the unions. So as a teacher, um, I haven't received a copy of that. I don't think copies have been printed. Um, so it's it's a matter of going back and looking at that. And, and then what is the differences there? So I know the the our school board. I've had conversations with them, and they're working with other boards to kind of see what are the differences, what are there. Um, the 2015 curriculum was based on the 1998 curriculum, so yes. the, the foundations were there that are still there. It, it, had, it had that necessary, so we're going to cover the, the, the basics of that. It's the extension, what, what has been removed, and some key elements we know have been removed, but what all that entails is kind of up in the air right now. And that's part of, that again, that confusion as we start the school year as teachers. Um, what, what we're going to be using and what we're going to be actually teaching. Um, Whatever happened to making an <coughs> informed decision? You know, getting getting the, um, opinions from the experts, talking to the right. teachers and saying, you know what, you guys are dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. How much do the kids really need mm -hmm. in 2018 as opposed to 20 years ago? And, and that's a huge part of our, of our discussion. The, uh, the curriculum that came out in 2015 was based on a parental input. It was based on... Um, public health service, medical services, research from all the different parts of the spectrum to create that curriculum. Um, what we're using now and what ETFO and we're telling our members is you're going to use your professional judgment and you're going to get to know your classrooms and you're going to, you're going to address the needs just as any other teacher. We have an obligation under With the... With every other subject too, We have right? an obligation With under the or? Ontario College of Teachers, the Practice of Standards, the Ministry of Education, the Education Act. We have to meet the needs of our students to create a safe and an inclusive classroom for them. So we're going to get to know our students we're, and we're going to give them the information they need right now. Um, and I think we have support across the province. I know there are several boards that have supported that. I know there are several parent groups that have supported that. And, and a lot of the parents that I've talked to over the summer, um, because it's, it's again, it's not a lot of information going out. So the parents I've talked about, we explain the issues and explain the situation, are, are on board with that. I haven't had really anyone who's talked to me who's been against that mm -hmm. because it's, it's about meeting the students' needs where they are and what, what they need to move forward. And you want to make kids of, of all stripes and shapes and sizes and beliefs and leanings to yeah. feel included. Hard to sell that when it doesn't feel like the government's being inclusive. Yeah, and, and, and I, th I think and that's part of the injunction, right? We believe they're going against even some of their own uh, inclusive uh, Standards Act and some of their own protocols. Uh, so we believe it, it, it's not it's not a step that needs to happen. And it, it's about the students, it's about the parents, it's about the communities that need to have that. Uh, and, and we, uh, and that's all have always had a strong uh, support and strong backing of our of our, our, our curriculum and our students and our communities. And I think part of that is is getting the information, being open and accountable and, and, and doing what's needed to be there. So uh, I think the snitch line is, is again, part of one, the, the difficulty with that because it, it really undermines that. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, it's a financial implication for that. Like for, for a government that was campaigning on cutting $6 billion, they're now creating this. Are they going to, who's manning these lines? How, right. how is it going to be? Who's going to investigate those? Are they going to have to hire people? Who's taking care of the follow-up of it, that? Is it the board? Or the, is the board going to have to take further money away? Because the government's already taken money away from special ed and, uh, and other supports in the arts. school system and in the arts and, and, uh, and our class sizes. So we believe that this money doesn't need to go to those things. We, it needs to go to redoing the funding formula, making sure that the funding is there for students who need them, making sure they have the proper... Uh, mental health supports in the school system and in the community all across the province, not just in education, but in the greater picture, our mental supports, our mental health issues, and, and our, our, our accessibility to those issues have been cut. And I think that's part of the issue. The money is better spent making our class sizes smaller, letting us have that better one-on-one -on -one with students. When you have a, a class of, you know, 30 students in kindergarten, mm -hmm. 29 students in kindergarten, which is the, the class size cap now, that's a hard class. That is. To manage, even when you have other people there. So if we, working on getting those numbers smaller to have that better relationship, to better meet the needs, I think the money would be better spent that way. You know what, it's interesting you talked about <coughs> the mental health issues and, and um, I was just reading a, an article before you arrived this morning about a survey that was just completed about how so many people internationally think of Canada as an awesome place to raise your children and it is, right? It's yeah. absolutely 
phenomenal to be a Canadian kid. But the numbers are increasing with regards to mental health issues, with regards to suicides, and Ontario is leading the pack. Ontario is the worst province for that. It's, it's unfortunate that that's happened, and I haven't read that, that study or that report, but I do know that Ontario education is, is one of the, the gems across the world. Mm -hmm. where you, where, where we've been held up as a, as a guide post to what we need to follow. And I think by repealing this, this education and by some of the other moves that have happened across the province over the last several years about removing some of the structure, especially in northern Ontario, where you don't have accessibility to some of those things that you would have in other local locales. So it really falls on the school to kind of provide those, those issues. And I think those are what's happening, and it's, it's really eroding, I think, the education and, and, and moving, and again, not moving us forward in, in, oh. as we should be, it's moving us back in time. It feels like it's moving us way back, doesn't it? Yes. The injunction, what happens next? Uh, so right now it's filed. It, we're, we're part of several groups. There's a, there's a, a mother who's uh, mm -hmm. started the injunction on her own and part of that. So we're part of that group going moving forward. What happens next will be, uh, I guess your guess is as good as mine because it's now in the court system in that process and, and how long that takes. Um, we Again, we've had uh, some dealings with the court systems for uh, some of our, mm. our, our our personal bargaining rights were impeded upon and it took a while it takes a long to get time. that done. So we're hoping that with through public support and through just you know, kind of the, the, the understanding of the message getting out there that we can make sh this go as quickly as possible and we can get a, a, a resolution to this as soon as we mm -hmm. can so that w all the teachers, the students, the parents, the community can put this behind us and move forward so we all are on the same page, have the same information, mm -hmm. the right information we need at the time to serve our students when they need it. And just before we let you go, <clears throat> if, if parents are watching and are concerned or if something comes up in the next, you know, several months till June, with their child in particular, and it's a, it has to do with this cutback, with this curriculum change. Is there something that a parent can do on a Wednesday night at seven o'clock when their child is crying because they're being called names because they're different? I would say you do the same thing that's happened before. You, you, you go back to your schools, you talk to the principals, you talk to the teachers. So much in my role, is is dealing with with the kind of the, the staff and the parents and, and or not just the parents but the board but it's often that first step not we as teachers can't correct things we don't know what's going on mm -hmm. so letting the teachers know letting the parents know if you if you disagree with what's going on as the curriculum base uh, of the repeal then you need to talk to your your mpp you need to call the government uh call you need, uh, to, you need to use your voice yeah uh, the, the, we have a mechanism that's literally in place that you can call and your concerns in the school board through the teachers, through the principals, and, and I really encourage any time that happens throughout the year, please contact a school. That 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 the, the open communication and the accountability that we have there, and that that two-way communication between the community is essential to moving us all forward. If there's a mistake made, then we need to correct that and move on. If there's more information needed, we need to correct that, and move on. And we can't do that if we're we're not working together. Well, we're certainly glad you are there working together with uh, other entities taking care of our kids in the school system. Thanks so much well, for coming in. Thank Appreciate you very much for the opportunity to give our speech. We'll be back on TV right after this.